Hey there, my name is Craig. I am the architect guy. In this video, I'm going to go over how to mark up a shop drawing from the contractor and get that packaged up and ready to send back to them. So in this case, I've got a casework shop drawing example open. Uh, so I just went to the drive and popped that open. And this is the first page here. Uh, the, they had the contractor's name and project number and all that kind of stuff. I just whited that out. Um, but this is the contractor's cover page. So then after this, the shop drawing, uh, it's got the plan and then a couple of elevations. As you see on the bottom, we've got 32 sheets of this, but I'm just going to go over the first sheet and pretend that's the whole thing, and then we'll go from there. Um, so on the plan, in this particular instance, we've got kind of a U-shaped piece of casework, dimensions and in inches on each side. Uh, so let's say this 130 and a quarter inches is not correct. So typically what I do is I have red text and lines that I put in here, and sometimes I put bubbles if I want them to make sure it gets noticed. Um, so let's say I don't want the 130 and a quarter. So I'm going to go over here on the line and then go to properties. So right now the color is red, which is what I want. I've got that selected. So I'll just put a mark through here. And then I'll go to my text box tool. So I click that. Red color is fine. Text color is red. That's fine. So then I will draw a box. And let's just say that's supposed to be 124 inches. So I'll put 124. And then move that right above. And then I will go down to the cloud. And then make sure the color is red for that. And then just do a cloud around there. That way the contractor knows that, okay, it's not, that's not the correct dimension. We want 124 inches there. And then I bubble it just to make it obvious that they'll come across that as soon as they come through here. So if I go over to the elevation, um, let's say the SSM, so that's solid surface material one. Let's say I don't want that to happen. I'll do the same thing here. I'm just going to do T on my keyboard instead of go over to select the text box. So I hit T, it selects that, draw my box. Let's say it's supposed to be PLAM-2. Select that. I need to drag the box over a little bit to make that bigger. And then same thing, grab the cloud and put that over top of it. Uh, so those are the real basic markups that you can do. Let's say we want to get something a little more complicated. So maybe we wanted another bank of these box file cabinets here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to hit G on my keyboard. That's the same thing as a snapshot. So I'm going to draw, I'm clicking and holding, drawing a box around what I want to copy. So that's copied now. If I hit Control V on my keyboard, that pastes it. So obviously, so it's obviously all black line work right now, which is not what I want to do. I want to make it obvious that I'm making a change here. So with my settings up under Snapshot Properties, I'm going to go over to Change Colors, and then a dialog pop box pops up. So it's a preview of the two before and after. Uh, so I'm going to choose the source color. Right now, nothing is selected. So I'm going to choose black because that's all the line work there. And then if I select the two color, I can make it any color that I want. In this case, since all my markups are red, I'm going to choose red. So I choose that. I hit OK. And now it changes that snapshot from black line work to red, which is what I want. And then I'm going to put that next to the current one. And then I want a note here that says add file cabinet here. So instead of just text, I want to do a callout, which is similar to text, but it's just got a leader line, uh, like what you can do in Revit. So I'm going to hit Q. I'm going to click where I want to start the leader box, and then click once. And then I'm going to say add file cabinet. And then let's just say it's per latest CB, because maybe we haven't the latest CB and they just don't have it updated here. So I'm going to do that. I want the text to be a little bit more over to here. And then just move that leader. And let's say I actually want another one on the other side. I can grab this, hit Control C, Control V, and then move that same snapshot over. 
and then I want the same note to point over there. Instead of copying this whole note, I'm going to click and right click and then add leader. And now it starts from that corner point and then I'm just going to move that over here. And then instead of grabbing the cloud over on the right, I'm going to hit C on my keyboard. And then I'm going to draw a kind of an odd shape around everything here. So I'm holding shift to do orthogonal, but then I'm letting go over here and then shift again, just kind of going around here. And then once I close that, it pops up. That's really all I'm going to go over right now for markups. Um, it's going to be, I'd say that's the majority of what we'll be doing is just clouding things, adding some notes and maybe uh, putting a snapshot in there and modifying the line work from black to red. So let's say that completes my markups. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the thumbnails here and then go back to my front page. And then what I want to do is add my cover sheet on here. And I really don't have anything on here except for the text example cover sheet. But typically it's going to have our logo in the upper right corner. It's got a bunch of info on the date it was reviewed, who is reviewed by. It's got a couple generic notes in there that says contractor field verify all dimensions. If there's any notes I want to add to the front, I can do that. Maybe it's all casework uh, to be locked or have locks on there. You know, just some typical notes that I'd want to include. So we always include this onto our front, the front of the casework shop drawing or whatever shop drawing we're working on. So we add that to the front and then we package it all together and then send that back out to the contractor. Um, so as you can see here, I can't just grab and drag it and drop it onto my other document, but still super easy. So I want to create or uh, jump into the casework shop drawing, the stuff that I was just marking up. It's that same document. I can be on any page here, but just make sure your thumbnails are open. And then I'm going to open up my file explorer. And this example cover sheet is what I want to be inserted into my document. So I'm going to just dr click this, drag it over. It doesn't really matter where you put it with this blue bar. So I'll just drop it. Uh, make sure the example cover sheet is selected. And then down here is what the most important thing is. So you can add it in between any sheet you want. But in this case, I'm going to say before and then first page. And then don't I, I really don't have to worry about any of these options in this instance. So I'll hit OK. And now my cover sheet is included into the front of my document, which is perfect. So now I've got the contractor's original sheet, my original sheet, or my uh, cover sheet, and then any of my markups. So what I always like to do too is I like to go to tools and then, oh sorry, it's under, it's under document. I want to go to document and then flatten all of my markups. And what this does is it makes them all part of the document so that once the contractor gets these, he can't move around any of my markups and say, oh, you didn't put this on here. You didn't put that on there. It's all part of the document and they can't edit that. So I'm going to hit flatten. Um, I can leave all of these on here. That's fine. Allow markup recovery. That's fine. If I ever want to change my mind later, I can do that. And then I'm going to hit flatten. It's going to take a minute, but now, as you can see, I'm trying to grab these markups and move them around and it's all part of that document now. So it's going to be a lot harder to manipulate later on. And then last thing I do is just file save. Sometimes I save as and then say reviewed and then my initials on it just so that internally we know that, okay, this is the reviewed version. And then we always try to keep a copy of the original version that hasn't been reviewed at all. So that's a mildly quick overview of my process of marking up a shop drawing and then getting my cover sheet on there. 
and then batching that all together and getting it ready to send out to the contractor. So hopefully that is helpful to you and you can go back through these steps and work on submitting some shop drawings. So thanks for watching. My name is Craig. I am the Architect Guy and I will catch you next time.